hi everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here my name is brianna and in today's video i'm going to be talking about all the books that i read in april i read a total of i think eight or nine books and i'm going to be just going through what i read a little synopsis and what i think about them so just in case you guys are new here which you probably are this is my very first video so on this channel i plan to be doing some book videos i'm also going to be traveling very soon and i'm going to be vlogging that so there'll be a lot of travel vlogs a lifestyle videos kind of everything in between without further ado let's get started so since i read most of my books on my ipad i don't actually have the physical copies of them so i'm just going to insert a picture right here while i'm talking about them the first book i read in the month of april i actually started reading it in march and finished in april it was kind of a slow read for me this book is called maybe you should talk to someone by Lori gottlieb so this is a very interesting book kind of not quite something that i would pick up um one of my favorite booktubers emma books i'll link her channel down below she actually recommended this book quite a while ago and in quite a few of her videos i give this book a four out of five stars it was pretty good now this book is about a therapist named Lori. so it's basically a non-fiction retelling um of about a year in her life as a therapist at the beginning of this book something very unexpected and quite tragic happens to her and she has to actually go to therapy for herself which is something that she's never done before so basically throughout this book she's navigating going to weekly therapy sessions she's navigating her loss heartbreak and basically just dealing with the whole event that happened and it basically tells the story of her learning different things along the way just basically dealing with everything and she also tells the story of a couple of her clients and their stories how much they have changed since they started therapy with her and i really like this book because i just love to see the character progression not exactly character progression because they were real people but Lori's progression and a couple of her clients I actually really liked and really got attached to their stories as well yeah it was very interesting to see kind of behind the scenes of therapy because she actually also talked about how she decided that she wanted to be a therapist and basically her life up until she became one and how her life is after and it was interesting seeing her struggles going to therapy as a therapist herself so yeah it was interesting seeing Lori's story and how she grew and developed throughout the book and also her client stories how they changed as people how they became better how they overcame their struggles this was a book that i've had on my tbr for such a long time and i finally picked it up and i'm really glad that i did because it was quite interesting and unlike anything i would normally read so the second book that i read this month was ugly love by colleen hoover i gave this book three out of five stars now that might be a little bit controversial because i've seen a lot a lot of people talking about this book colleen hoover is super big on book talk super big on booktube everyone i know is reading colleen hoover and they all seem to love her basically this book is about this girl named tate who's in her early 20s and she's working as a nurse i think she's in nursing school or graduate school or something like that and she goes to live with her older brother and she ends up meeting this guy named miles who's actually her older brother's next door neighbor she meets him the first day that she moves in and this book is basically about Tate and Miles' relationship and how they kind of get to know each other. Tate and Miles kind of fall for each other, but Miles doesn't open up right away. He doesn't want to be with Tate. He wants nothing to do with her, even though you can very well tell that he is in love with her as well. Miles doesn't want to open up about his past because something happened and he's very clearly not over what happened. And throughout this book, you basically see Tate and Miles' relationship evolve um, until one day it gets to a breaking point and you find out exactly what happened in Miles' past. Okay, so if you've read this book, let's talk about Miles. I'm not gonna give any spoilers here, so if you haven't read this book, you can keep watching 
but I hate Miles, this man. He is such an unlikable character, but when you get to the end of the book, you'll kind of figure out why he's like that, but still, there's no excuses. The way that he treats Tate is just disrespectful. You cannot treat a woman like this, come on. Even if you can't open up about what happened in your past, do not treat a girl like this. This guy was fucking terrible to her and Tate should not have put up with a lot of that. So I just really didn't like those two being together. After I read this book, I actually realized what the cover signified. And if you've read this book, you'll know what it means. And I was like, oh my God, Coho's covers always seem to have meaning. So the reason why I gave it three stars is because I hated Miles. I know he's not supposed to be likable, but the next book I read in the month of April was Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this book is about two girls named Frances and Bobby, and I believe they are 21, 22 years old. So they're in college. Frances and Bobby used to be lovers back in high school, but they broke up and now they're just friends. And they seem to be each other's best friends. They perform spoken poetry together. At the beginning of this book, Frances and Bobby meet a couple named Melissa and Nick. I believe Melissa is a a photographer or a writer or something like that and she ends up interviewing Bobby and Francis and they all get together they go for dinner at her house with Nick so throughout this book you see Francis and Bobby becoming friends with Nick and Melissa who are this couple who are quite famous they get drawn into this world of money and fame and kind of what it's like to be living a more grand lifestyle than what they are. This book is pretty character driven. So over the course of a year, it follows their relationship with each other. Francis ends up getting into a relationship with Nick, who's the husband, and there is a huge age gap there. And it basically follows Francis and Nick's relationship and Bobby and Melissa's relationship throughout the course of a year. This book is more character driven, so it focuses on the characters and not really the plot, which I didn't quite like. If you like a character driven book, this might be for you. But basically it's about these four characters who are very flawed. None of them are very likable. The characters didn't change all that much throughout the whole book. They kind of stayed the same. And in a character driven book, you want the characters to change and evolve and, you know, traumatic events to happen or just big life changes. At least that, that's what I want. Um, I've seen some people who said they really like this book and I've seen some people who said they hate this book. So I'm kind of in the middle. So my mom actually read this book after me and she thought the same thing. And what she said about it was it's messed up people in a messed up world. And I agree with that. These flawed characters are in a messed up world and they're just trying to navigate life. And you know what? I don't blame them for some of the things that happened, but the relationship between Francis and Nick, I did not like that. Honestly, I did not like the ending of this book. The ending wasn't very different from the beginning. They were doing the same things they were doing throughout the whole book. There wasn't much change that happened with the characters, which is my biggest complaint about this book. And another thing, if you're new to Sally Rooney, she does not use quotation marks in any of her books when the characters are speaking so it can be kind of hard to get used to it took me a little while to get used to it but then it wasn't that big of a deal and the next book i read was every value break by peter swanson i gave this one a four out of five stars it was really good it was a much needed change of pace from conversations with friends this book is a thriller about a woman named abigail who meets this millionaire man named bruce and instantly they seem to hit it off and they end up getting married within less than a year but before they get married abigail goes on her bachelorette party to a secluded island or 
something like that with a couple of her girlfriends and on her bachelorette night she meets this mysterious man and she has a drunken one night stand with him. She instantly regrets it and when she comes back from her bachelorette weekend, she doesn't tell her fiance. A few days before the wedding, she realizes that this mysterious man has actually been following her and he followed her back all the way to New York City where she's from. She's like, why is he here? I wanna get rid of him. I told him I'm not interested. He should not be here. My husband cannot find out about this. She ends up getting married to her husband, Bruce and on their honeymoon weird things start happening basically they're on their honeymoon in a secluded private island resort kind of thing um, there's no electricity no cell phone service and really weird things start happening so I'm not gonna go into much more detail than that because it'll probably be a spoiler but I think I just really like this book after conversations with friends because it was such a much needed change of pace one thing I didn't like about this book is Abigail the main character the fact that she married him and she only knew him for less than a year They barely knew anything about each other, but they still got married. That was a big red flag and That was the main reason why all the weird things started happening. She shouldn't have trusted him She shouldn't have trusted this man. I don't know why she did I would not marry someone if you don't know anything about him. Okay, so I'm so excited to talk about this next book I really enjoyed it and it was really really funny to me. This book is called Dial A for Aunties by Jessie Q. Sutanto and I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. So this is a Crazy Rich Asians-esque book but not as serious. It's really funny, it's really hilarious. Um, there were a ton of laugh out loud moments in this book that I really enjoyed. So this book is basically about this 25 or 26 year old woman named Medellin who gets set up on a blind date by her mother and during that date she ends up accidentally killing him now this is not a spoiler you know this from the synopsis you know this from the very first chapter so she kills her blind date accidentally and she has to try to cover it up she enlists her mom and her three aunties to cover up the body and hide it and basically get rid of it so the next day they go to a wedding and during the wedding they have to cover up the body they have to hide it and throughout this book you just see the hilarious shenanigans that the aunties and the mom get up to so they're crazy they're asian they're like typical crazy asian aunties i don't know what more to tell you they just get into shenanigans like one part of the book they have the body in a cooler and they're like wheeling it around the wedding they're acting all suspicious but just the things they say are so funny and i was flying through this book i think i read it within two or three days i could not put it down it was really good and there's also an element of second chance romance in this book it's not as high a priority of all the other things going on but it's kind of there in the background so i would have given this five out of five stars but the ending was super rushed and kind of expected and i just i just didn't like the ending then i read four aunties and a wedding by Jesse Q. Sutano, which is the sequel to Dial A for Aunties. I gave this one 1.5 stars. I did not like this book. I feel like this book was super unnecessary. They could have either completely eliminated this book or combined the two of them, but I think eliminating this one was the better option. It was just so unnecessary. If you have not read Dial A for Aunties and you don't know the ending of this book, you might want to skip over this part because the synopsis of this book basically tells you what happened at the end of the other one. So, Medellin ends up getting back together with her old college boyfriend and they end up getting married in this book. Basically what happens is that the wedding vendors for their wedding are the mafia and they plan to take someone out at Medellin and Nathan's wedding. It's just the shenanigans that the aunties get up to and that the wedding vendors get up to. It's nonsense, it's ridiculous. So in the first book, there's a body that they're trying to hide at the wedding. In the second book, they're gonna kill someone at the wedding. Like, it's just repetitive and I did not find it very entertaining. 
the aunties just their shenanigans seem to get over the top honestly maybe if i gave this book a month or two months time before i read it after reading the first book it would have been more interesting but i don't think that this book was worth a read okay i love this next book it was so hyped by so many people i gave it a read because i love romance and it just seemed like a heartwarming book and boy i was right so this book is called love in other words by christina lauren and i gave it five out of five stars so this book is basically about this girl named macy who is 28 or 29 and she's working in pediatrics at a hospital she's living her life totally fine but one day she runs into her childhood best friend and lover named elliot who she hasn't seen for 10 years. So throughout the story, you see them kind of rekindling their relationship. The story is told in alternating chapters, so from the past and the present. And throughout the story, you see how they became friends, how they became lovers, and what happened in the end to make them not talk and not see each other for 10 whole years. Just the way that this story was written, the way that the author brought everything together the alternating chapters i just i loved seeing their their love story when they were teenagers when they were in high school they were just so perfect for each other and i i just i loved it this is a childhood best friends to lovers to second chance romance it was just so so good and i'm so glad that i picked up this book this month the last book that i read this month was called 2 a.m thoughts by mackenzie campbell this is a poetry book and i don't read a lot of poetry i've only ever read ruby core and a couple other ones but i read this book at the right time it hit different it was good so i gave this book four out of five stars i read this from 2 to 3 a.m which is kind of ironic because it's called 2 a.m thoughts so the poems in this book are structured i think in two or four parts and it basically goes from her navigating loss and heartbreak and just dealing with all of the emotions that come with that in the second part she is finding herself and she's able to figure out what she wants and she's you know excited for the future and falling in love again i really liked it and in some parts i could relate to it it hit kind of close to home because i'm going through kind of a similar situation there were some really good quotes that i'm going to insert here So that's it for this video. These are all the books that I read in the month of April. So April was really the month where I got back into reading after taking a break for so, so long. But I've been reading ever since I was a kid and I always loved reading. And I think after this month, I'm really gonna get into reading. I ordered a Kindle. I'm so excited for that. So I'll just be able to read any book I want instantly. I was really happy with the books that I read this month. This was a pretty good reading month month with a lot of hits except for four aunties in a wedding which i would just not recommend that book if you were to read one read dial a for aunties that's a really good one but you can just skip the second book like it's not worth it let me know what your favorite books this month were what you guys read and if you have any recommendations for me i'd love to hear them i have a huge tbr but I would still love to hear what you guys are reading right now. And you can connect with me on Goodreads. I will leave it in the description down below. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click that bell to get notified every time I post a video. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.